my name is Ada Bogatek, I'm product manager at Sauce Labs. Today we are going to be discussing how Sauce performance works, what it can do that affects your team's testing strategy, and what kinds of business benefits we see when implementing front-end performance testing. With most testing processes, front-end performance is not tested at all, and if performance is tested, it's at the end of the testing cycle. Testing performance at the end of the pipeline causes delays in speed to market and can be a financial drain on your company if it takes longer to fix an issue than anticipated. Finding the root cause behind any discovered performance issues can also be difficult without a tool like source performance. Source performance gives your team insights into the front-end performance on your application and gives you access to that information in the same platform you are already using for testing. This gives your team a single unified test signal to base your applications and gives your team a more efficient process. Source performance is a tool that enables customers to track front-end application performance over time and capture new regressions as a part of CICD process. This helps developer and QA organizations capture and address performance regressions early in the development cycle. Get meaningful front-end performance metrics before you release to production and improve overall customer experience. Source performance captures performance metrics for hard and soft page transitions and the Jenkins of performance tests. And it's all captured from algorithmic baseline. You can quickly debug performance issues. There's front-end audits and history. You can also use Speedo and run tests using additional capability. This is all done via Google Lighthouse. We are now moving on to the demo portion of this tech talk. And I will show you how to get your tests up and running on Sauce Labs. So this is our performance GS examples over here. And as you can see, we have different frameworks. I will be using WebDriver.io in this example. This is our config file of WebDriver.io. Uh, we need to add capture performance capability and extended debugging capability. Name is also required to for the source performance command. And rest of the thing will stay same as it is. Now let's take a look at performance.js test case. Here in this test case, we first load source demo.com page and on the login page we will try to log in with standard username and then on the submit button uh, this page will redirect us to inventory.html page so here in this case we will be able to capture performance for two pages one will be source demo.com and another will be inventory.html okay now let's check how to fetch performance log so by executing source log command like this, and uh, you need to pass source performance as argument to fetch the performance log. Response will look like this, list of metrics with the value. And you can manually check uh, uh, value. You can manually assert the um, any metrics value like this. I, here I'm asserting uh, performance.score that it should be greater than 0.90 otherwise test will fail if it is not okay so this is about the source log and if you want to fetch true regression based on machine learning algorithm you need to execute source performance command like this and you need to pass a required argument name name is required argument and you can also pass metrics if you want otherwise by default it will check for all the metrics and return regression if anything is detected so this is all our hard page transition now let's take a look at jenkiness so here we are using this jenkiness sample page in this page if we add more ui components the smoothness of the page will be decreased and uh, yeah so that's why we are adding 10 ui components over here to start jenkins test you just need to do browser.execute source jenkins check command you need to use this command and as a result you will get the this response which contains the uh, average fps and other scripting time timing metrics so basically in jenkins check 
we scroll the page from top to bottom and record frame per second memory usage idle duration time and layout update score and based on this calculation we calculate a uh, jankiness score in this case we optimize the previous uh, jankiness and reload the page and so here score should be greater than 0.7 and here score should be less than 0.7 so this is our jankiness uh, performance check now let's run this test case So as you can see, some of the test case are already executed. So let's take a look at the UI. And so here uh, on the right side, we have performance score with uh, on hover over the score. You can see number of URLs are two and you can get the highest and lowest score. So in this case, both the URLs have 100 as a score. So both are same. Let's take a look at UI. So uh, in commands log, you can see uh, important performance metrics with the related command here this metrics are related to softstimeout.com page and this metrics are related to inventory.html page okay now let's take a look at performance tab so here as it says number of urls are two we are on the first um, url this is hard page transition if you want to check the summary of um, urls and metrics you can click on this and then you can see list of urls with performance score and it's uh, some of the metrics okay let's go back and here <clears throat> you can see performance score so we uh, we have three colors uh, and we describe it as a fast low and average based on the score range and this are important metrics first contentful paint time to interactive largest content footprint, cumulative layout shift, total blocking time, and speed index. Based on this important matrix, we calculate performance score. And uh, yeah, if you want to check uh, performance matrix history, just click on this uh, metric and you can see the history with its baseline. This is about it. And uh, we have a few a full report for this performance. Uh, you can view trace, you can check the Lighthouse report as well by clicking at this button. And you can download the trace log. You can see matrix definition if you want to understand more about this matrix. Okay, so let's take a look at the second page now, which is our inventory.html page. Okay, so this is uh, UI stays the same. Just values are different based on the page. Okay, let's take a look at a report now. We have all the metrics available, which we fetched uh, uh, in this performance testing. So this first six metrics are used in score calculation and other metrics are also important, uh, but this metrics are not used in score calculation. And UI stays same and if you want to check the history, you can click on any matrix name and you can check the history as well. So this is our film strip section, uh, which contains the screenshot of the page, which time, uh, what was the screenshot. Uh, we also display the matrix information in order of its time on this film strip so to understand what's going on here. And we have in our UI, we have this main thread work breakdown information available. Main thread is basically responsible for all the rendering process like parsing HTML, parsing style and style layout or JavaScript execution. So you can get this information available here. We have this request information also available here like number of requests and the size of request type of request all this information are valuable now let's take a look at our history page so in performance history you can compare two matrix history so here let's say if you want to compare first contentful paint and largest contentful paint matrix just select those two metrics and click on apply button 
so yeah here as you can see this is first contentful paint and the above one is largest contentful paint so this is how you can compare two metrics and we have this brush zooming thing so if you want to change and if you want to zoom in zoom out you can use this uh, brush tool variable so this is about the performance ui and the last thing is lighthouse report if you click on the button you will be able to see the lighthouse report of that page which provides some good uh, diagnosis and audits and some important stuff over here and let's go back to our test results and now uh, we will take a look at Jenkins ui so in Jenkins ui uh, all the things are same we are fetching performance for this page first Jenkins uh, score and scroll time let's check the performance so we have some regression uh, let's ignore it for now and we would like to check uh, scroll Jenkins performance ui first i will close this regression information for now yeah so this is our Jenkins ui Jenkins performance ui which has frame per second score layout update score uh, memory usage score and idle duration time score and based on this thing we calculate Jenkins score let's take a look at uh, a report okay so i will close this regression information for now and in this first section we have all the timing information available script time rendering time painting time and idle time and over here we have average frame per second force reflow counts and memory usage difference okay and this is total scroll time so as i say earlier uh, in Jenkins test we scroll the page from top to bottom and we record this thing meanwhile and we have this frame per second cpu and um, js hip size chart available with us so based on this uh, matrix you get a chance to improve user experience so yeah this is about the Jenkins performance ui now let's try to Run, go through the performance regression i would like to run a regression test we have a command for that i would like to uh, decrease uh, test let me decrease some parallel test to make it faster and i will run and then run regression test So here in the regression test the source demo.com okay so we have earlier we logged in with the standard user now we will be logged in as a performance glitch user this we have created this user to glitch the ui and to create the performance regression okay so uh, in, with this command uh, npm run regression test we are trying to log in using performance glitch user and yeah we will see the regression uh, ui in whenever the test will be done okay so uh, some of the tests are completed so as you can see with the, uh, our source performance execute script we fetch the regression for load and speed index like this and our performance score checking is uh, checking test is also failing now because of the performance glitch user okay so this is how uh, you can use uh, performance testing to catch a performance glitch uh, before the release okay so now let's take a look at the ui so as you can see our tests are failing uh, performance score so first page performance score is still 100 but our lowest score is 36 so inventory.html page uh, has a lowest score right now so as you can see on this test detail page we have received performance regression alert that means some of the metrics are outside of baseline 
So if you want to check the details, just click on view details button. And as you can see, all these metrics are outside of baseline. Now let's check performance tab in this case. This warning shine indicates that performance regression is detected for inventory.html page. So there are two ways to solve this issue. You can improve performance on your front end site by changing code, or you can adopt this new baseline by click over here and just do adjust baseline. So new baseline is adopted, and this is how performance regression UI looks like. So this was all from my side. Thank you very much for listening to me.